Hi, welcome back to the course of fundamental of food preparation. Today we are going to continue our practical class, which is practical number five, which about basic bakery and the usage of microwave oven. The objective of this practical class is first we're going to learn the basic techniques of bakery. Second, we're going to utilize microwave in cooking. Baking can be referred as the chemistry of cooking. This means all ingredients must be accurately measured and measurement is critical. This is because a small error in the measurement will affect the final result of the baking process. In baking, normally food is cooked by using convection oven in which the hot air circulates around the food placed in it. Since it is a dry heat method of cooking, Dry heat is generated from the hot element during the cooking process. Most of the baked food are brown and crispy on the top and soft and porous in the center. And the most of common uh, baked food includes cakes and bread. Usually, the baking process will involve several stages, eh? include melting of fat, formation and expansion of gases, killing of yeast and other microorganisms, coagulation of protein, gel gelatinization of starches, escape of water and gases, and cr crust formation and browning. One of the important aspects in baking is monitoring the gluten development. Gluten is a substance made up from protein that present in wheat flour. It gives the structure and strength to the baked cake or bread. The baker needs to the baker needs to able to monitor the gluten development and know the texture or the end product that is desired. For example, in the baking of bread and cake, usually we want the bread to be firm and chewy, which requires a lot of gluten. On the other hand, we want the cake to be tender, which means that we want very little development of gluten. I believe you have learned in detail in the lecture on how we can control the gluten development. Alright, for this practical class, you just need to perform one task which is baking. For this task, you will require several equipments and consumables. For the equipments, we are going to use convection oven, a hand mixer, a big Chinese bowl, a big bowl for mixing purpose, a cake pan, spatula, and then a two teaspoon. For the consumable, we are going to use three medium of carrot that has been grated, or it's equivalent to three cup of grated carrots. We're going to use four medium of eggs, one cup of white sugar, one cup of brown sugar, one cup of vegetable oil. For this time, I'm using some flour oil. Two cups of all-purpose flour, one teaspoon of sodium bicarbonate, one teaspoon of baking powder, one teaspoon of cinnamon powder, and then one teaspoon of extract, vanilla extract, and one fourth teaspoon of salt, and the last one is one teaspoon of butter for the greasing purpose. For this task, begin with preheating the oven for 10 minutes at temperature of 160 degrees Celsius. Next, scale all the dry ingredients accurately. Accuracy of measurement is critical in the baking. Begin with the measurement of 2 cups of all-purpose flour and then followed by the other dry ingredients.
sieve all the dry ingredient include the flour, baking powder, sodium bicarbonate, and cinnamon powder. Putting your flour through a sifter will break up any lumps in the flour, which means you can get a more accurate measurement. Sifted flour is much more lighter than unsifted flour and it is easier to mix into the other ingredient when making batter. After it's done, put them aside. In the mixing bowl, add in the eggs, white sugar, brown sugar, vegetable oil, salt, and vanilla extracts. By using spatula, mix them well. It is followed by using hand mixer, stir the mixture until the sugar disappears. Next, Add all the sifted dry ingredients into the wet mixture and stir the batter by using spatula and followed by using hand mixture. Stir the mixture until it becomes fluffy and light. After the batter is well mixed, add the shredded carrot into the batter. Stir the batter against 
until it's well mixed. After the batter has been well mixed and there is no lump or clump visible, pour the batter into the cake pan. For greasing purpose, you should add some margarine or butter to the surface of the cake pan so that it will prevent the batter from sticking. Next, put in the cake pan into the oven. And bake it for around 40 minutes. After it's done, Take out the cake pan from the oven. And then, set it aside for a while to let it cool down. After it's cooled down, remove the cake from the cake pan. By using serrated knife, cut the cake into small pieces. You may cut your cakes according to your desired size.
Finally, transfer the kit into a plate. And now, your nice carrot cake is ready. You may serve it, you may serve it to your guests and your family. Alright, I think that's all for practice class number 5. I hope you are able to perform all the tasks assigned. I wish you all the best. See you in the next practice class. Goodbye.